Well, it is an exciting time of the year. Many college students will be coming home for the summer. High school graduations are around the corner. Plus, school aged kids will be off for the summer in a few weeks. So today we are talking about how to prepare and handle these transitional role changes and stress that might come with it. Jenna Mendelson, a licensed psychologist with Cone Health Labour Behavioral Medicine, joins us for today's two year well being. Hello, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, let's start with the oldest. When your college age children come home for the summer, they're used to having more independence and may have opinions about things like curfews, responsibilities. What advice do you have in these situations to really just help keep the peace? Broadly speaking, anticipate an adjustment. Just like you said, kids who have been away at college have probably gotten used to a lot more independence than they used to enjoy at home. So just preparing for that. And just like the kids may have changed, it's quite possible that parents have gotten used to some new routines around the house. Mm -hmm. Having an open conversation in advance, maybe a few weeks before your college age child returns home, just to establish cl clear expectations and boundaries can help with that adjustment. Okay, let's um, stick with that. How important is open communication during the transition? It's very important. Like I said, parents and college age children change during the time that they're apart from each other and kids are away at school. It's a transition, not just for your child, but in your relationship with your child, where you can anticipate going from knowing them as young children and teenagers into knowing them as adults. So approaching that transition with an attitude of curiosity, rather than jumping to assumptions that maybe your child likes all the same things that they used to like in high school or even middle school, getting ready to get to know them in their new stage of life. Mm. If the young person doesn't want to talk with their parents about how they're feeling, managing things, what advice do you have for parents to try to get them to open up? That can be so tricky, especially since during this period, it can be developmentally typical for kids to not really want to talk to their parents as much as they may have wanted to, especially when they were young children. So just letting your kids know that you're available for them, you're a secure base that they can come home to when they need it. And also just expressing curiosity, like I said, being available, doing little things like rather than assuming you know what they're going to want from the supermarket based on what they may have wanted in high school, asking them before you make a supermarket run and you may be surprised to find that their changes, their tastes have changed and they learn from even that small of an interaction that you are open to the changes they may be undergoing. Mm, absolutely, and what if a parent is concerned about the changes they notice in their child now that they are home? Are there any red flags to look out for? Absolutely, mm. and, and while we can anticipate changes during this time, there are certainly some changes that can be concerning. So if your child is acting more reclusive than they used to, not just from you as their parents, but also from friends that they used to socialize with when they were home. If it seems like they're just going in their room and closing the door and not going out, that's a time to be concerned. Major changes in their sleep habits, a decline in hygiene, changes in eating habits that result in a change, a weight gain or a weight loss. These are all concerning changes to be on the lookout for. And you know, some parents might also struggle with their kids now being young adults. So what advice do you have for parents who really might be struggling with that? Yeah, it's, it's a tough time for parents to sometimes refer to as empty nest syndrome, which of course is not a clinical diagnosis, but the fact that there is even a little term for it speaks to how broadly challenging this period of time can be, especially for those who really identify closely with their role as a parent. So advice for parents would include just preparing in advance, um, being aware that this time may be challenging, that it's a transition and those difficult feelings won't last forever. 
and having a bit of a plan for themselves for what their life might look like when their kids are no longer in the house. Maybe signing up for some activities even before your child has left so you already have that system up and running before they're fully out of the house and your role has changed. If you are the parent of a high school senior, you and your child will be preparing for what's next after graduation. So talk about the range of emotions this can trigger um, and advice for both parent and child. That summer after senior year can be a really emotional time in a lot of ways for both parents and children. While it can be a really exciting time, there can also be feelings of anxiety about the next chapter and sadness at closing out sort of their childhood and living at home with their family. So anticipating a lot of emotions, some of which may be pretty intense, can help in making it through that that transition and knowing that it is a transition and the intense emotions will pass. For young people who may be anxious about what's next in this new chapter, what advice do you have to help them? To anticipate that they may also feel anxiety, it's, it's okay. It doesn't mean that they're not going to go have a wonderful time at college. And also to remember that this is the first of maybe many major life transitions that they're going to experience. And that experiencing this anxiety now and experiencing it working out will help kind of inoculate them for the next time that they're facing a major life transition. Hmm. And parents might start feeling stress about their school aged children being home for the summer in a few weeks, balancing work, then childcare. What steps can parents start taking now to help make that a really smooth transition? Talking with kids in advance about what the summer is going to be like and making a bit of a plan with them, involving them in that process so they know what to expect. One idea is if you are anticipating your school aged child having a lot more downtime over the summer, during which you as a parent may be busy with work or errands or household chores, helping your child to create a little bit of a schedule for themselves so they know what to do during that time where you may be busy doing other things. Yeah, and for children who may struggle with change, are there additional considerations, things parents can start doing now to, to help their child prepare? Certainly. Maintaining some consistency can help a child cope with the bigger change of not having school over the summer. So for example, consider maintaining extracurricular activities that they can participate in year round, planning play dates with classmates that maybe they otherwise wouldn't get to see over the summer, or even arranging for your child to attend a camp with a friend from school can help them adjust to that transition. We have so many different um, activities and uh, d different things during the summer are happening right here in the triad. Are there any activities that you might suggest for their children? Ooh, good question. Martial arts can be oh. really fun for okay. kids. They're fun to do. They're great exercise and they can help with self-regulation too, with that emotion regulation and impulsivity. So martial arts can be a great avenue to explore. Many kids enjoy dance or participating in a sport. So broadly speaking, following along with what your child's interests are, and the summer can be an opportunity for them to explore those interests a bit more deeply. Wow, martial arts, that, that's pretty awesome. Okay, well, it's important that we all take care of our mental well-being year-round. What options are available for children and adults? Well, certainly at LeBauer Behavioral Medicine, we have therapists who see people really across the lifespan, and it never hurts to talk to somebody. Generally speaking, I recommend establishing a routine for self-care ideally before you reach a major transition, so that you have those habits in place to fall back to when other aspects of your life may change or cause you stress. All right, absolutely. And what is the best kind of way for someone to reach out for that resource? Would they kind of talk to their primary doctor or maybe they might know someone within the school that could give them um, a good resource? What, what do you think is the best way to do that? Speaking to a primary care physician is a wonderful option, especially since some insurance companies will require a referral 
from your primary care physician. Certainly another option is calling your insurance company or going on your insurance company's website to find a local provider. And because you're going through your insurance company, you know that provider will be covered and in network. And of course, Labauer Behavioral Medicine has a website that people can access freely. Absolutely. Well, you have about 45 seconds. Is there anything else that you'd like to say? Well, I think just broad takeaways would be to anticipate a change over the summer. And many people have difficulty with changes in various forms. So preparing with some self-care in advance, if you can, having conversations with your kids about what the change might look like so that you can establish those boundaries and expectations together, and just maintaining open lines of communication by being available to your kids. All right, really great advice there. If you missed any parts of our discussion, you can rewatch this segment by clicking on the To Your Wellbeing tab on our website.